So we were given grade pins in the center. So they gave us these marks and they had big fills on them. So we put in uh, string line pins so that we could build it up to the right grade without losing it. And now, because it's cross fall, we go from curb to the center. So now we're able to do that um, easily without losing the, the pins. That's what the... Vern Kyle here. Teresa has so much experience at doing grades. On this site, she came up with a really good idea to use these steel pins to grade the crown. You see, sometimes the compacted material is so hard, it would be difficult to pound a wooden lath or hub into it. So a nail or a sharpened pin is an alternative. The grade crew also measured over to the curb at each station and marked the distance to the crown. By doing this, even when these nails are covered with gravel, we will always know where the crown line is. As a grader operator, you should always try to utilize the grade information as much as possible. A surveying crew probably spent a half a day placing these nails, and we were able to complete this project using the original set. The grade crew also puts a lot of effort into giving accurate numbers, so they deserve the same respect. You may notice that this 20 mil gravel here has a dark color. It comes from a quarry that has just a trace of coal in it, but it packs really well. This job is a bit unusual. Normally, the crown would be consistently right down the center. On this job, the crown is not only off to one side, but it varies all the way. At the end of this photo, the street is 60 meters wide, but it gradually tapers down to 46 meters wide. For me, this job was fun to do, but I'll bet it was a nightmare for the paving crew with all the slivers and wedgies. That's what the pink ribbon shows where the actual grade is gonna be. And once we're all done, we'll pull out the pins and pack it and it should all be good. Can you guys bone this? If we didn't do it this way, we would end up with having to get the surveyors to come back time and time again just to try to get this close. You'll have to go on the gravel. On the gravel. Jesse has to be down, not on top of the curb, because 
the grade that we're given in the center is for the gravel lift, not the final lift. If we had it set up for final lift, then he could be up on the curb. Now, right along the curb on this job, we are able to take a little shortcut. Coincidentally, the curb is 200 millimeters thick and the job calls for 200 millimeters of asphalt. So it worked out perfect that way. And I tried to be careful not to contaminate that area out there. I didn't want to uh, change the grade out there just uh, wanted to leave well enough alone in that regard. This job also gives me the opportunity to talk about transitions. Isn't it exciting? I bet you can hardly stay in your chair. In this freeze frame, the red crown line tapers out to zero. When the design of the street changes from crown to crossfall, there has to be a transition area. It is always a good thing when the transition area has backup drainage. Where I drew the blue circle, it shows an area that could have a 0% crossfall. But even if that is true, the water will still drain toward my camera. If you are doing one of these transitions and the curb is completely level, good luck. You may get a slight bird bath on the finished asphalt, right at the dead zone. You can always say you did it because you like birds. Well, I just wanted to talk about uh how crazy this crown is on this one street. It actually follows this curve line. And uh, you can see where the white line is up there, I hope. And so it follows this curve, the existing curve for a while. And then it jogs over a couple meters and it ends up uh, <laughs> and, it, and, and it ends up it ends up uh, you know way off to one side so the, the the crown of this road isn't even anywhere near the center plus it turns it turns at one spot jogs over the white line here is the crown one more freeze frame I want to tell you how to get the crown exactly where it's supposed to be. As I bladed across the left side, I generated a small windrow of gravel. I then bladed that windrow just slightly past the crown line where I marked this photo in brown. I then asked the grade crew to measure out from the curb and paint the crown line back on the street. Next, I then move to the right side of the 2.5% crossfall and made my cut, leaving the paint line for the paving crew. We used the buggy to pick up a few scraps of gravel that I generated from making that cut. I hope you found this video entertaining or helpful. And uh, if you did, would you please subscribe or give me a like or leave a comment below. We'll see you next time.